Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to Think Tech Hawaii with your host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Stikes, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. You now tuned into the Prince of Investment, and without further ado, let's jump straight into it. I almost forgot my little intro there for a second. But anyway, I am a little bit under the weather here in Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado, of course, we didn't decide to do. It is already snowing here. That is correct. It is snowing in Denver, Colorado. But I'm still here. I'm a little cloudy. I'm a little under the weather, but we're going to get it done. Um, so this, today's topic is going to be in the description box that you guys and girls can already see. We're going to talk about four uh, ways you can invest for your child, four different accounts that you can start for your child. I know uh, I get a lot of phone calls, conversations, emails. People always ask me, hey, you know what? I'm looking to invest for my child. How can I do that? And the problem with that is that it seems like it's a plethora of information because I was one of the people when I started investing for my son, I had the exact same situation where it seemed like it was so much I could do, I didn't know what to do. And every day I was finding something. First, I started a, a checking account and I said, great. I started a checking account for my son because I didn't have one growing up, right? And then... Once I found out I could invest for them, be a college players, I wanted to look into college players. I got into college players. Then from college players, I learned about different ways I could invest for them. So then I jumped on to that. So it seems like it could be a, a, a lot. So I have a pretty, pretty uh, extensive experience in it. Not in every single one because I haven't used every single one. But I have enough knowledge to speak about it to maybe help you as you go down the path and select something. I'm just going to let you know what it is. Give you the pros and cons, and you can pursue however you want to pursue. All right? Let's get into it. This is the first way you can invest for your child. It's via a custodian account. That is correct. Number one, we're going to use custodian account. Um, what is a custodian account? A custodian account is an account that you open up via, you probably can, I'm pretty sure you can open up one via most financial institutions, most brokers that are out there. Uh, you can use a TD Ameritrade, an E-Trade, a uh, uh, Scott Trade, uh, Interactive Brokers. I'm pretty sure they all have custodian accounts. It's pretty much just like when you go into a bank account. If you want to open up an account for your newborn child, of course, you can't open it up because they're not of age yet, but you can open it and be the custodian of that particular account, meaning you'll be the parent or guardian over that account, a custodian account. You can open up the account for the child. You can invest for the child. When a child turns 18 or the minor, you don't have to be the mom and dad. You can't be the uncle. You can't be a school teacher. You can't be a mentor and do this for them. When you open up the custodian account, you can invest for that child. Once they turn 18 years old, the account will become theirs. So let's list out some of the pros of a custodian account. A custodian account, you can go in, for, let's say if you want to buy McDonald's stock. You can do that in a custodian account for your child. Or your child really loves Apple, Microsoft, said they're a big Xbox fan, you may want to get a Microsoft, or if they're a big iPhone person, they love the iPad, iPhone, you may decide you want to get them into Apple products, or you may want to get them into Microsoft, whatever your uh, taste is. So you can go out and you can individually invest for them. So the money there, you get to, I'm looking at some of my uh, pros that I wrote down, some of the notes I wrote down for the show, is that one of the things you, one of the pros you get to have is that there's no limit on how much you can invest. You can put how much money you want to put in there. Another thing is the value of the account uh, is removed from the donor's gross estate. For a prime example, the money that I put into my son's custodian account, it's not, it's, it's written away from my estate. It's not mine anymore because once he turns 18, it's going to be his, right? So that's one of the good things. You can open up an account. You can invest how much money you want to, however you want to invest it with stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever the case may be. And when they turn 18 years old, he or she turns 18 years old, the account is theirs. Now, the cons to this, taxes. You don't get any tax breaks when you do a 529 plan. If you get a 529 plan, the government, actually when you make earnings or dividends, they could be subject to kitty tax, right? Um, another thing is the child will gain the rights to the account when they turn 18. I know I listed this as a, a pro, but it's also a con. You can probably guess why. 
when you build up an account, a child turns 18 years old, uh, are they responsible enough to take to take the account? If my dad would have gave me a $30,000, $40,000, $50 account when I was at my 18th birthday, I probably would have went and bought a car, right? And I probably would have, like a lot of my friends, I remember that that had accounts like that, they went out and brought cars and they thought they were getting a good deal. They was like, oh, well, look, I got this new fancy convertible Lexus or whatever. It's two, three years old. It usually goes for 60000 but I got it for forty, So I got a great deal. Right. So do they have the level of knowledge? So that could be a con as well. Another con is the last con I want to bring up was when a child goes to go get for, if they try to go get financial aid, this will count against them. If they have a custodial account, this will count against them by having their own 529 plan. So, you know, you go to fill out the, 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 Financial aid, if they go to fill out financial aid, they ask them how much money they have, where the, where's the money stored, this could go against them. That's what the, the some of the down the, uh, the downplay. Really, the taxes, I really get the biggest thing is the taxes. You don't get any tax breaks. You actually will have to pay taxes on gains and things like that if you uh, decide to go that route, right? Number two, one I haven't explored with, but I'm very interested in, number two. Is a Roth IRA account. A Roth IRA account. Uh, this is an individual retirement account. Roth meaning that it is paid with uh, after tax dollars. Meaning, for a prime example, you get paid. After you get paid, you put money into this account. So, a Roth IRA is that's pretty much what it is. You know, it's a retirement account for somebody. You can open one for a child. Most of us don't get Roth IRAs until we're adults for ourselves. I think it's pretty cool to get one for a child. So let's talk about some of the pros of that. Uh, contributions can be withdrawn at any time. Just like in the custodian account, contributions can be withdrawn at any time to do whatever you want to do. If they are used for educational purposes, they can be waived from the 10% fee, uh, early withdrawal fee, if they're used for educational purposes. If they're not used for educational purposes, then you can be uh, hit with the 10% early withdrawal fee. Another one is, you can invest it in anything. You can just like the 529, you can invest it in anything, right? Uh, the value of the account does not count against you like the 529 plan. It counts against you if you want to fill out uh, financial aid. This does not count against you for fi financial aid because it's considered a retirement account. So those are the problems. Let's look at some of the cons. The max you can, in the 529 plan, you can put whatever you want to put in it. Versus on uh, some of the cons for the uh, IRA is that you only can put five thousand five hundred dollars in it, you know, according to twenty eighteen last year rules. That's the max you can put it to an IRA. Only married couples that make less than one hundred eighty nine thousand dollars can contribute to it. Withdraw from IRAs. Uh, Withdraw from IRAs to pay for college does count as a base to year income. So if you take your money and use it for college, it can be used as an income. Um, so it does have an income. If you make over $189,000 as a married couple currently, you can use it. If you make more than that, then you don't qualify to use the Roth IRA uh, for particularly for, you know, in general. So $5,500 is the max you can put in there. It does have a cap of money you can put in there. But if you're somebody that looking at, hey, I'm not looking at putting that much in there a year anyway, then it could be possibly beneficial for you anyway. So those are the pros and cons for the Roth IRA. I like the idea of the Roth IRA uh, because everybody has a retirement account. And by you, the earlier you get a child started with a retirement account is a pretty cool idea. I like the uh, Roth IRA deal because once they turn 59 and a half, they can withdraw it without any of the penalties. I see people decide a Roth IRA buy houses, things like that. So I do like that idea of a Roth IRA. Even though now currently I'm with a custodian, but I do like Roth IRA. Number three, we're going to go into the Coverdale ESA, uh, Educational Savings Account. This is the Coverdale ESA. One thing is you get the same benefits of the 529 for the most part. You can pull money out. Uh, it can, you can pull money out to pay for education, and you can pull money out for kindergarten through 12 kindergarten to 12th grade if you're paying for private school, things like that. So you can pull money out at any time without any penalties. 
you can invest it in anything. Um, the it goes against the parents' uh, estate, not the student estate. The cons are so those are the pros. The pros you get pretty much the same thing as a five two nine, but some of the cons are, for the most part, you only get to put two thousand dollars a year into it. Contributions can be made up to the child is 18, but they have to be used by the age of 30. Only married couples earning between $190,000 and $220,000 are eligible to, to uh, participate in the Coverdale ESA. So that's the one for the uh, ESA. Now, you have a couple other ones in here. You have the custodian account that we went over. We had the other one with your, uh, you can do a Roth IRA, you can do the, cover, uh, the Coverdale account, you can do a 529 plan. Other ones that you can do is bonds. They have one on there for bonds, mutual funds. I don't really count those as one because those are more investment uh, interests, but they're not really particular accounts. So one of the things you can do for your mutual funds, you can do uh, with mutual funds, for a prime example, you can buy an index fund, which is considered a mutual fund. You can buy index and continuously invest into the index over and over and over and over on a consistent basis. So that's another one that you can do with, um, um, that's number four. So you got a custodian account, you can do. You can do a custodian account. You can do a uh, Coverdale ESA, uh, also, what's the other one that we had? Cover, uh, 529, Coverdale, and a custodian. Another one you can do is a checking and savings account, right? Number four, checking and savings account. Inside that checking and savings account, you can go in and pretty much purchase, uh, you know, just save up money, which is probably not the the, the pros of that is that um, it's very liquid. You can pull the money at any time, have no penalties. Um, you, you can put how much you want to put in there. You can put in your child's name. You can withdraw it at any time for any reason with no penalties. Uh, you have the, you can, it's easy, it's very uh, liquid, meaning you can get to it very fast or whatnot. But the downside, the greatest downside to that is that if I'm investing for 10, 15, 18 years, you know, that account is probably not going to keep up with inflation. That's the downside. Okay. So, by you going over time, you're looking at something called opportunity cost because your savings account is going to earn you probably about 0.02 or something like that or whatnot if you're lucky. But you got inflation moving at a whopping 2% or maybe 3% in some years. But most of the time it's 2% you have uh, inflation running. So that's the bad part about saving in a regular checking and savings account. If I open, up, open up a regular checking and savings account. You know, it's not a bad deal. All four of the options are great ideas, depending on different strokes for different folks. Because some people like to get a, a checking account, a savings account, they purchase CDs, which are very conservative. You know, have little interest in today's low interest society. But the problem with that, the downside to that is the growth. You're not going to be able to tax the, uh, tax the growth to it. So hopefully that helps you, help you out with the 529 plan, the Coverdale ESA, the uh, Roth IRA that we spoke about and the savings in the checking account. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, that's going to be the end, the end of today's show. If you got questions or comments, just drop comments below. Check us out in the description box. Thank you for checking us out here on D-Tech Hawaii. I am the Prince of Investing, Prince Dax. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe. I'm out and thank you.